Hey guys, I'm Jim and I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Luminar AI and I'm going to walk through a workflow and share how I control the outcome of my image using different tools and things like that in this app that I love. So let's get started. Here's the photo and the first thing I want to do is change this composition a bit to a 16 by 9 simply because I like 16 by 9 but also because it makes it a little bit thinner and wider, of course. And what that's doing is taking out some of that foreground because if you look at it, uh, this was shot you know, fairly wide and there was a whole lot of foreground. And because there's nothing to kind of anchor that foreground, I think you lose a little bit of viewer interest perhaps. Maybe it doesn't direct the eye as well, things like that. So I wanna take a little bit of that out and then get started. So first things first, Composition AI. And I wanna go to Light and I'm gonna go over here by making it a little bit cooler. And then I'm also gonna take a little bit of a tint to the right, something about like that. And one of the main reasons I did that, in fact, let me put that tint back. If you look at the original photo, there we go. All the gold yellow light that's shining on the stonework here, to me, um, it's gold and yellow looking, but it also it, it has a little bit of green to it to me. And I just don't really like that. So that's why I'm taking the tint to the other direction. I'm going to like 18 or 19. It's creating a little bit more than a magenta cast, which I think creates a little bit better look in the yellowy orange kind of look uh, or color. And it gets rid of some of that green. So it's just a personal preference, something I like to do. But for me, it visually helps the photo. And I think it looks better already. I'm going to jump down to Enhance AI, and in this case, I'm going to use Accent AI, and I'm kind of going crazy. I'm going to go to like 82. I'm really just popping this thing quite a bit, and now the colors are pretty bright and saturated. That's fine. We're going to play around with that a little bit, but mostly it's all about, uh, in this case, just brightening up that image and getting me to a good starting point. I feel like I have that now, so I'm going to move on to color, and in this case, I am actually, believe it or not, I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit and the vibrance as well. It's pretty saturated and vibrant. I don't want to overdo it. This is not a clown vomit kind of thing where I just want to like barf super bright color all over the place. I like my color, but I'm going to mute it a little bit, not a ton, just a little bit. Um, after this, I want to get into HSL and I'm going to go into the saturation and I'm going to pull the saturation of the yellows down. Got to look at my notes here and I'm pulling those down about 60 or so. And again, that is just kind of controlling some of that color in that foreground on the stonework. So if you turn this off, there's the before and there's the after. And just for the record, I love cities at blue hour. I just think they look fantastic. It's like my favorite thing. So now that I've done that, I've got a lot of colors looking the way I want them to look. However, there's one tool on the Pro Tab that is pretty much the greatest thing of all time, Color Harmony, and in there specifically is Color Balance. It allows you to pick shadows, midtones, or highlights and go make adjustments to the colors in those tonal ranges. So I gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna start here, go a little bit to the left with the cyan and red, and then the yellow blue, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right as well. So something about like that. So let me show you. There's the before and the after. Basically, I've in the shadows gone a little bit bluer, which is making it darker. And so if you look at that, there's before and after. It's creating a little bit more contrast in the image, which I like. Now I'm going to go to midtones. And this first one, I'm going to I'm going to warm these up a little bit. So I'm going to go like a 10 or so there. And over here, I'm going to do like a negative 10 or 12, something about like that. And then over here in the yellow, I'm going to do like a negative 20, 25. And there we go. That's creating a little bit richer color in the midtones, especially uh, in the warmer areas. So there it is before and after. And then the last piece on this tool is highlights. And all I'm going to do in the highlights is take the yellow blue and go to like a negative 18 or something like that. So the color balance took me from that to that, a little bit richer color. Um, it does appear a little bit more saturated, but it also has created a little bit more contrast in the image, which I like. I think contrast can add a little bit of drama to an image. And in scenes like this where you have a little bit lower light, I like to have contrast. I don't like a fully well exposed image. I want to have a little bit of contrast. I think it creates a little bit of viewer interest in the photo. Okay, while we're on the Pro tab and speaking of contrast, I'm going to go to Dodge and Burn. This is a great tool, super powerful, allows you to selectively uh, lighten or darken areas in the photo. So I'm going to start on Lighten. So I'm clicked on that. I'm going to leave my brush size about where it is. And strength, I'm going to go down to about a 10 or so. And all I'm going to do is paint a little bit lighter spot in there, paint a little bit on these statues, and basically just move the mouse around here, paint it on some of these buildings as well. And uh, just kind of continue talking to you, hopefully to entertain you a moment while I do some of this 
uh, dodging and burning. This is dodging, which is lightning. Burning is the darkening, and we're going to do that next. So I've done that, and if you're looking at it, you might be thinking, Jim, it doesn't look that much lighter. And you're right, it doesn't. But if I turn this off, and if you look at those areas, you'll see there's the before, definitely darker, and after, noticeably brighter. So as you keep going over it, you're going to build up more and more. You can obviously also come back with a higher strength brush if you want to. I prefer to start pretty low and just go over it a few times, but it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Okay, now we're going to go to dark, and so I'm going to click on that. Once again, I'm going to lower the strength here. I'm going to do probably about a 12, and I'm going to come over to some of these areas and darken them, including this wall here. And all I'm trying to do is create a little bit of contrast and also slightly direct the viewer's eye kind of toward the cross and then down the bridge. Now I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And if you notice, there's shadow play, for lack of a better word, on these bricks, like where the light is falling, like on this left-hand side, and I'm not painting, I'm just pointing with my mouse. But on this left-hand side, it's brighter, closer to the lights. And then in the center, where the light doesn't quite reach as well, it gets a little bit darker. Then again, over here, closer to these lights, it's a little bit brighter with pockets of shadows. So I'm going to come in here and darken some of this and just create a little bit more of that shadow. And all I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast where those pockets of light exist. And basically, again, just creating a little bit more visual interest in the photo. So not a whole lot, but if you turn that off, you can see the before. If you look at those buildings, they are darker. And if you look at the walkway, it's a little bit brighter. Then when I turn it back on, you can see now the buildings are a little bit brighter and some of that walkway is a little bit darker. Now here's the thing, if you do it and you're like, ah, it's too much, I don't want to go fix it, there is a slider here for overall amount, that's an opacity slider. I'm actually going to pull this opacity down to about 70 or so, so I'm slightly reducing what I did because I think I want a little too dark on that darkening. So now, before and after, just a little bit more shadow in those darker areas, a little bit more lightness in those areas in the back, like along the buildings, and it's looking pretty good. I'm not done though. Now here's when I come in with the local masking tool and you can also basically dodge and burn with this tool. So you can come in and um, if you want to paint, I've got a paint mask, I've selected paint and I'm going to come in here and just paint a little bit uh, around here and I'm going to do a little bit of a sloppy job, but you know, we're all friends, we're just kind of hanging out. So I'm just going to do this real quick. And now that I've got all that selected, notice that's the same area that I painted on with dodge and burn to lighten. I can now come in with an exposure, right? So if I increase it a lot, it looks terrible because it's really blown out, but I can increase it just a little bit and create a little bit more light in those areas. And if I turn this off and you look at those areas, there they are before. Now that still includes dodge and burn. So remember the original image, I'll show you that, they were even darker. So there it is before this local mask, but with dodge and burn. And here it is after adding that local mask. And maybe that's a little too much, that 58, maybe that should be more like a 35 or 40, you know, season to taste, whatever. I'm just kind of showing you an idea here. I also think I'll take the saturation down because there's a lot of that blue color kind of working its way into that. Maybe pull down the vibrance, maybe pull the highlights up and maybe, maybe adjust the exposure a tiny bit more. So one more time, there is before in that area and there's after. I think it looks a little bit better, gives you a little bit more visibility into that. I still think it's a little bit too bright, so I think I'm gonna pull that exposure down. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go 30, I'm moving this thing a little too much. Uh, maybe like 32 or something. Anyway, I got it in place, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm now gonna add another local mask, and once again, a basic local mask. My original one is down here, and this is my new one. And in this case, I want to do a little bit on that stonework, uh, that cobblestone. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush. I'm going to go ahead and paint in. And you can see where the mask is going to display because I'm basically painting into the stonework here and covering all of that. And now that I've got the mask in place, by the way, sometimes I'll dra drag the sliders and then paint the mask. Sometimes I'll paint the mask and then drag the sliders. It doesn't really matter. It works the same either way. In this case, I'm going to do a couple of different things. So I went ahead and put the mask in place so that as I do them, you can just look in that area and see how it's being affected. The first thing I want to do is take the warmth down. I want to cool that off. And so I'm going to do like a negative 50 or 60, something like that. And I'm basically creating a cooler look to that foreground, that cobblestone, which is basically taking some of that blue 
um, and applying it there. But because it was so heavily orangey yellow to start with, the blue's not really showing up as a blue. It's really just reducing the impact of the yellowy gold that was there. So beforehand, there it is, a little bit richer, warmer tone. And afterwards, there it is, a little bit more uh, subtle. And I think I'll actually take the saturation down a little bit and maybe the vibrance as well. And in fact, I think I'll take the saturation of vibrance down maybe just a tiny bit more. And that's one thing I think when you're playing with colors is it probably makes uh, more sense to not saturate and highly, you know, create a lot of vibrance in a lot of colors. Maybe just pick one and really have it pop. So in this case, I'm trying to tone down that gold, warm, uh, orangey look a little bit. And in fact, while I'm at it, I'm going to reduce the brush and I'm actually going to paint that same uh, mask into this area because that's pretty warm and gold as well. So I want these same adjustments to apply there. So now that actually matches a little bit better. I think that goes better. I'm going to leave this little gold part of the statue because that is probably coated in some kind of gold whatever. Um, it should be pretty gold, I think, from what I can tell, and I'm going to leave it as such. But now that I've got that in place, I also want to bring the structure up. So now I'm going to pump the structure a little bit, like, you know, 12 or something, not a ton. I just want to create a little bit of crunch there. And so that's giving me a nice little bit of uh, pop in that section. Let me turn this off. And you can see the before, a little bit warmer, a little bit more saturated, a little bit less crunchy. And then when I turn it on after, you'll get a little bit more desaturated, not quite as warm, and of course, a little crunchier because of the AI structure that I added. I love having AI structure as a component of these local masks. It comes in really, really, really handy. And now the last thing I want to do, I was talking about color. I've talked about it a few times. And in terms of controlling that color, I'm going to go back to the Essentials tool, and I'm going to go to Color. And while I'm on Saturation, I'm going to take the blue saturation down. And I'm just going to do that a little bit. I don't want to overdo the blue. Maybe something about like that. Maybe down 15 or so. It was pretty intense. And I don't want to just kind of go crazy on that. But that is my photo, and that is my final look. So if you do the sliding window here, you can see it's quite a bit brighter, quite a bit more vibrant. The colors, the details, things like that are really different. And I think I've shifted them pretty well. I especially like the change in color and look um, in this um, walkway here. So if I, if I put this over here, you can kind of see better. But on the left-hand side, the original, not as crunchy and... A little, uh, I don't know, a little less interesting to gold for my taste. Again, this is all personal preference. This is just me doing what I would do to the photo. But on the right-hand side, I like that the tones and colors look better, a little bit crunchier. I like a little bit of that shadow that I added with the dodge and burn. You can see it's a little bit like this uh, kind of section here where it's a little bit dark and kind of discolored. I just think that looks a little bit better as well. So just something to think about. Uh, and if you do the overall before and after, and again, this doesn't include the crop, uh, which I did at the beginning, but that's before any edits other than the crop. But there it is, kind of washed out, kind of greenish yellow, and, you know, kind of blah, to be honest. And now I think it pops. I think it really jumps off the screen. It's a photo that I'm proud of, and I like quite a bit. But mostly I wanted to walk through my workflow, give you some ideas, tips, tricks, things like that, to give you some uh, ideas about how you can use the different tools and how to think about how you can approach an image to really control the outcome of the image, which is really what this video is all about. Local masking comes in super handy, and don't be afraid to use masks on the individual tools as well. Lots of power, lots of flexibility. That's Luminar AI. That's this video. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have fun editing. I'll see you out there. Take care of yourselves, and adios.